Yeah, hi there. Uh, these comments are for L, and you just completed uh, my post test uh, for the speak clearly part of my seven step system to pass a TOEFL IBT. So, uh, in terms of your intelligibility, I'll go ahead and click the link into the YouTube video under the description box so you can learn a little bit more about it. But you're actually in pretty good shape here. Uh, I'm going to say that. I'm not comfortable giving you a five or higher. I'm going to give you uh, I'm going to give you 4.9 out of seven here, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But you do have a bit of a non-native speaker accent. You have some occasional problems with uh, your pronunciation, but it doesn't really interfere uh, in the meaning of your ideas. Now, in terms of lessons, uh, the whole purpose of the post test, right, is to see if you understood and have made progress with the vowel and the consonant sounds. Also, that you've you've also understood what you studied in terms of syllable division, grammatical word endings, word stress, sentence rhythm, intonation, thought groups, and blending, right? Okay, in terms of vowel and consonant sounds, there is one word you still are having some trouble with. It's in lesson 16. When you you said the word casual, casual, you weren't cas casual. So I recommend lesson 16. You should practice that just a little bit more. Also, lesson 23 with the T sound. Also, lesson 19 with the P sound. Just make sure you pronounce those sounds with enough air so we know exactly what the sound is uh, that you're saying when you're speaking uh, a particular word with that particular sound. Uh, in terms of the second part of the uh, pronunciation part of my course, uh, I would recommend, uh, let me go back to the lessons here really fast. Give me just a second. I'm going to go to the website, see what we have here. Yeah, there are a few things that you're going to want to work on in that second part. Okay, I'm going to the website right now. Okay, under the pronunciation, okay, let's see what we have. So beginning with the uh, second part, uh, I would say that I think you still need some practice with intonation. That's lessons 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. Uh, definitely, you need a lot more practice with thought groups and blending. That begins with lesson 41, 42, 43, and 44. You're still sometimes pausing uh, after different words within thought groups, which you don't want to do. For example, if you look at uh, the first pair, the first passage that you read, you said, beginning line three, she or he will feel uncomfortable and move away to increase the distance between them. But it's more move away. We don't really pause after moving away. We say move away. Or another one was. Uh, where is it? The uh, reading passage number two in the fourth line there. He or she will feel that you're in his face and will try to back. You said back away, but it's more back away. So again, in terms of thought groups and blending, uh, L, uh, number one, you have to identify the thought group first. And, and typically, a thought group occurs after every four or five stress words when you're speaking, right? So number one, you pause after the thought group. And then you want to blend the words within the thought group. So I think you're pausing after your thought groups, but you're not blending the words within the thought groups the way that you should. All right, so those are my basic suggestions there. Uh, good to hear from you. Uh, keep up the good work. Remember that pronunciation, there's a lot of things you can do that can help you get better. And one of them, of course, is to speak as much English as you can as long as you can. 
as often as you can. Uh, listen to the radio, watch TV. Just make sure you're getting kind of things into your into your brain. You know, you're getting used to the sounds of American English, right? And it does become easier, and your pronunciation will gradually become more and more similar to the language around you. So be patient. Uh, keep up the good work, and uh, thank you.